السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله uh, First of all, tell me what's your name Ibrahim Calderon Ibrahim, uh, where are you from? I'm from Mexico, originally Mashallah, and do you live in the United States? Yeah, I live in uh, the United States in Idaho Mashallah uh, Okay, uh, today I'm going to uh, present my friend Ibrahim He became a Muslim and I'm going to ask him to tell us about his story of becoming Muslim. So, could you please tell us your story about how you know, how you became a Muslim and how you got all that information? Sure. Why did you choose it? Yeah. Um, so, I've been a Muslim for uh, four years now, alhamdulillah. Mashallah. But, um, no, for a long time, in high school, I mean, I grew up Catholic mm -hmm. with my family, you know, but um, being from Mexico, but they weren't very uh, devout. It's like, no, they don't go to church every day, I mean, every week, or they don't, uh, aren't too strict, you know, so uh, I never really considered myself a strict Catholic. Mm -hmm. And then, um, about when I was like in high school or middle school, I can't remember exactly when, but I just got really pessimistic and uh, I didn't like the world around me. So I, d I mean, I, I saw a lot of uh, pain and mm -hmm. poverty and exploitation and, dis and uh, inequality. And I saw bad people getting, you know, to the best places in the world, to the, the most uh, power. The hurting the you know innocent oppressed people and I said you know I, it was hard for me to, to see where God was you know so for a long time in high school I was um, I consider myself atheist you know like uh, I was a Catholic yeah subhanAllah but um, it was for those reasons you know it was hard for me to find uh, God and all of that mm -hmm. but um, and because of that, you know, I, I lived my life like I didn't care, you know, like there were no consequences, like it was, there was no point. So I would, you know, I would uh, do whatever I wanted, I would go out with friends, I would party, I would do these things that uh, were self-destructive, you know, they were not fulfilling me at all, you know, that I was not happy, I would do them because it was the thing everybody was doing and because you know those things can be fun yeah. at the time but really you go back to them because you're not satisfied you know yeah. and um, so I was doing that for a long time and progressively I got worse and worse and worse until I uh, got I finished high school but I kept you know uh, doing all of that and um, eventually I got to the point where, where I look back on it now and I know God was sending me messages, you know. Allah was trying to wake me up mm -hmm. by giving me, you know, consequences, first small consequences and then progressively bigger and bigger as, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't wake up. I didn't, you know, acknowledge them until finally I got, a, I got arrested, I got a DUI. I was driving under the influence and I got into an accident. And uh, subhanAllah, it was very bad, you know, so I was um, under arrest and I had to do a lot of community service. I was on probation. I did, um, you know, so many, two years of supervised probation. So that means I had to stay away from my friends, the people I hung out with and I did all that stuff with. And Alhamdulillah, you know, at the time I hated it. You know, I thought it was the worst thing to ever happen to me. Uh -huh. Because, you know, I, I felt like, you know, I don't know, like I was the victim in a way. Yeah. But after being away from them and being away from that lifestyle, I really, you know, noticed and I learned that I didn't need any of that. You know, none of that was really, I started feeling healthier and feeling better about myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, Alhamdulillah, when I was on probation and away from all of that, I, my sister, uh, invited me she wanted to go to a bookstore and she doesn't drive so I had to drive her and so I drove her to a bookstore and um, 
I still remember, you know, the images in my head and like the memory, you know, when a memory is so exactly. ingrained in your mind, yeah. so vivid, I still remember it very, very uh, explicitly. I was in the bookstore. I can't remember what she was getting, but I was standing there waiting for her. Do you still remember which store exactly? Or yeah, what? yeah, it was this um, st uh, Hastings. It's like a bookstore and a uh, movie store. Like, uh -huh. and, um, in Meridian or Boise? In Boise. And then um, she was doing her thing, and I, I looked around, and I, there it was, you know, there I was, we were in the uh, religious section, you know, with like um, Bibles, uh -huh. and, and I, I was, it was like gravitated to the Quran, a translation of the Quran, right? And I still remember picking it up and reading the first pages, you know, because the first pages tell you a little summary of like what it is about, True. Revelation, and the, a short story. Of, of what, you know, who the Prophet is and, and, and in that time you, you know that it's for Islam or Muslim or... Yeah, I knew it was, I, I mean... I mean, you know before about Islam or you don't the know? The only ideas I had about Islam was what I saw on TV. Uh -huh. You know, a lot, of it, a lot of it was bad. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of it was, you know... Uh, jihad and yeah. terrorist and mm -hmm. extremists, you know, but um, I really, I've always been the kind of person who doesn't necessarily believe because I, you know, I, because of what I see that everything around me, mm -hmm. my perspective was that everything around me was wrong, you know, and so even that, I felt like that, you know, that's probably just not even true, but I didn't know, you know, I never really sat down and thought about it. Um, until I picked it up, you know, just out of curiosity, I don't know, Alhamdulillah, he, Allah took me to it, and I picked it up and started reading it, and thought, you know, this is interesting. It was during the summer, so I was not in classes, I was uh -huh. going to work, I was working, but, you know, I had a lot of free time. Okay. And so I was like, I'm going to pick this up and read it, and, you know, just, for, just out of curiosity. And so I did, and I started reading and reading, I must have read that book. I don't know how many times, you know, now I still have it and it's Mashallah. falling apart. Mashallah. It's falling apart, you know, because I would take it to school, I would take it to work, Mashallah. and when any break, I would yeah. open it up, read like five, ten ayah, you Mashallah. know. Was, uh, so, why you picked it up? I mean, when you read from it a little bit, why you choose it? How you feel? Well, you know, at first, it, the first, like, Surat al Baqarah, uh -huh. or. Uh, yeah. Those are maybe a little difficult for somebody who doesn't know the history and that sort of thing True. to understand, right? True. So there was a lot I didn't understand, but there were so many passages that really, really spoke to me. You know, they, I huh. truly felt like they were talking to me. Of course, you know, it was talking to the prophet yeah, and yeah. talking about, you know, all these historical events and, you know, lessons to... Mm -hmm. You know, Bani uh, Israel and and uh, the Christians and things like that. But when it when it when there were like you know statements like reflect reflect on what your life is about, look mm -hmm. around you, you know, uh, and you know really made me reflect on what life was, you know, what I was here for, and it really like made me question my perspective. You know, and it really gave me a much clearer view, a much, it answered, you know, so many questions that it was truly, uh, that's why I mean, I think it was directed at me because, you know, all of the, all of the, you know, proclamations that I need to, you know, reflect and, and live my life towards, uh, striving to paradise, right? So, Worshiping yeah. only one God yeah. and not, uh, and, you know, being aware of the fact that uh, hellfire awaits me, you know, uh -huh. if I don't, uh, you know, submit to Allah and, you know, really appreciate what life is, you know, because life has so many opportunities. We have so many opportunities that we don't even acknowledge, you know, it's much easier to see the bad than to that's, see the good sometimes. That's true. You know, and it's yeah. just, it really made me reflect and be able to appreciate where I am at in life and and the opportunity that I have you know and so it really made me reflect on how did this come to my lap 
you know, because I would get these moments, those moments when I felt like it was really talking to me, I would get like my body would just like have like a euphoric feeling of like, you know, when you get goosebumps, like yeah. you just, your eyes start watering and it was just like, it was just, you know, such an amazing feeling. And uh, how long did you read the translated Quran? I, I probably read it for over a year. Inshallah. I started reading other things too, you know. I started, uh, I st also, throughout then I started like living like a Muslim, kind of, you know. Uh -huh. I didn't really have any guidance. Yeah. So I would like read prayer books and try to read, try to pray. Yeah. I would, um, you know, I learned uh, Al-Fatiha. I, I learned things, you know. Inshallah. I would read other and things. And all that before you became a Muslim. Yeah. You know, because I, I knew it was interesting, and I knew there was something there. You know, it was, and for a long time, you know, I would, I was living, uh, you know, halal. I, well, maybe not like the food and stuff. Yeah. But I wasn't drinking. I wasn't uh, going out and being in that environment anymore. Mm -hmm. And I could see how my life was just changing. You know, my my transformation. Uh, began as soon as I started doing that and as soon as really I started as I picked up the Quran really yeah. and then my parents and everybody who knows me tells me that I mean, and that and did so but yeah they you know how much I changed and um, you know it, it that was the only explanation but you know for a long time I was doing that without fully saying you know I am Muslim or I am without taking shahada officially yeah, you know? yeah. uh, because it's kind of hard See. a little bit you know you know you have something there but I'd like to take that leap sometimes for somebody who it was me coming from something that was totally different True. you know it was it was a little difficult for me but uh, alhamdulillah eventually mm -hmm. I met some brothers at BSU at, at the university and um, I took shahada almost uh, over four years now and um, you know it's been such an amazing amazing uh, thing for me you know I my where I was five years ago and where I am today mm -hmm. is alhamdulillah like it's just the most amazing thing to, to think about yeah. and uh, uh, what the reaction for your family I mean since you picked that did they tell you about why you're reading this or nobody told you that you know for a while I I mean I waited until did you hide it or you I didn't hide it but I didn't come out and like say hey this is what I'm interested in and I kind of regret that a little bit you know uh -huh. I regret that a little bit because maybe if I had said this is what look at what I'm learning yeah then maybe they would have said oh let me let me or that. like they would might have learned with me you know oh, instead okay. of you know, I learned and took shahada and then went and told them, hey, I, you know, I've found this religion and it's what I'm going, it's who I am now. And it's, uh, and then I started, you know, telling them a little bit about it. They were very supportive. Good. You know, they're supportive because they had seen the changes in me. They're like, oh, okay, that's why you're like, uh, I don't know you know, different, yeah. or like you're so much more peaceful, you're so much more easy to interact with, you know, um, but, you know, so they're very supportive because of that, you know, they understand that it's some, been something very, very good for me, but at the same time, they, they don't, um, they ask questions and things, mm -hmm. for instance, about Ramadan, they, they yeah. ask a lot of questions uh, about praying, you know, they see me get up to go to Fajr, or see me go out late to go to, yeah. to Isha, Isha and, right. and um, so they have questions about that they also have questions you know normal questions hijab exactly. and all sorts yeah. of these things, these things but but alhamdulillah they've been very supportive and inshallah you know in the future they can learn more and, and inshallah so d you mean did they like it or they wish you back to what you no were? no they weren't They've never been, like I said, they're, because I think that, uh, they aren't so strict uh -huh. in being Catholic. Um, I think they, they, especially my dad, my dad understands that there are other perspectives in the world, sure. you know, and it's hard for the, everybody to 
agree and have the same perspective. Mm -hmm. And so he thinks, you know, that if because it's something good for me, that it, uh, and I'm not, you know, changing into where I'm against them. Yeah. Then he's okay with it, you know. He's not uh, opposed. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So I wanted to give advices for non-Muslim people who will watch this video. What you want to tell? Advice for non-Muslims who yeah. will watch this. You know, I can't really say advice for non-Muslims. Uh, I would say, I mean, who am I to say? You know, uh -huh. but uh, learn first of all. Be sure that what you are, what you think you know is true. What you think you know is actually the case. You know what you've been told and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, because I think you can never stop learning, and there's uh, an infinite amount of things that you can, uh, you know, pick up. Yeah. Especially about something so important as religion, right? If you yeah. are a person. Who believes in uh, that there is an afterlife, that there is God, mm -hmm. then you should definitely spend your time trying to figure out which religion is right. And um, I think if you if you truly study Islam and have an open mind and and uh, really critically examine the, what you believe currently, then I think uh, Allah will guide you. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I can't really speak to yeah to non-Muslims in any other way. Yeah. I, I, so, what about I mean, how what it was in your mind before you become Muslim about Muslims people and how was it? Is it true? It was true or just? Oh no, not at all. Like what I knew about Islam before before really knowing about Islam. Mm -hmm was, I mean, I really didn't know anything. You know, I knew Allah, the word Allah, I knew Allahu Akbar, but I didn't really know what is any of like the core beliefs uh, of Islam or anything like that. So I can't really say that I was informed. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the whole notion of, of you know, people wanting to, you know, destroy yeah. uh, America or anything like that, that's just totally false. You know, uh, Islam is all about uh, righteousness and uh, fighting for what is just and uh, striving for peace, right? Exactly. Because yeah. Islam, in essence, is, is peace and submission to the will of Allah, yeah. which is yeah. the most peaceful thing you can do. And um, so, yeah, it was totally different than what anything I had, I had known. All right. All right, Ibrahim, thank you so much for that video. Inshallah. Hopeful for you a good future, inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Okay. Salaam. Salaam.